What's up? This is Eric Ong, and today I'm here with Vince Tan. He's the founder of Shock Media Studio, um, highest crowdfunding investor in Malaysia, built three companies from scratch to million dollar business, 18 years of experience in digital marketing, generate almost $1 million in seven days from just four product launches online, top 30 outstanding young Malaysian award, 100 most influential young entrepreneurs, um, serial in investor and entrepreneur, in in international speaker and trainer in over 20 countries, including TEDx, okay? I first know about Vince about two years ago, and we met we met quite a number of times yeah. through Zoom, through in person, and I think it has been a pleasure. I mean, the way he thinks will make you want to think bigger. I mean, he can spend like one million um, ringgit in a month just marketing one summit, and I mean, he has marketed one of the, like, the biggest summits in Singapore and Malaysia. Um, you probably have seen his ads before, or maybe... Maybe if you don't even know he's the one behind it, you, you might have been to his summit before, okay? So, um, welcome to the show, Vince. Hey, thank you very much, Ellery. It's been a pleasure and, and I feel very honoured that you invite me to be here. Thank you very much again, yes. So, okay, Vince, let's start off with uh, talking about the most recent summit you, that you marketed. How, how big is it and how do you market it? How are the stats? How are the results? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I, the, the latest summit was really interesting because, uh, yes, we did spend like almost a million uh, ringgit, which is about uh, 250,000 US dollars uh, over a span of five weeks. Uh, and the interesting outcome from that was that we are able to create the summit without needing to use me as the as if like the main spokesperson for the advertisement and stuff like that, which is what usually happens to a lot of summit. Um, so that was the first uh, first thing that we did, which is to bring myself out of the equation so that we can start to turn towards a sustainable, scalable model. Uh, so overall, we had. I think 30,000 registration. Wow, okay. Uh, 30 something thousand registration. Uh, and the, at the end of the day, we had about 3,000 people got the tickets. And more than 3,000, 3,000 something got the tickets. Uh, and, and so they come in, they participate, they learn uh, over a span of five days. So which was really, really good. Uh, I would say that we have delivered a lot of value to, to the to the. Uh, audience all right so it's not like a typical summit um, none of the speaker pitch anything at all it was pure value add uh, in fact the 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 we're literally giving out that convention for free in a way just put in a deposit fully refundable to them after the attending so there's no cost to the attendees as well okay you know so which was which was to me my goal was to really like get more people to learn about you know what we wanted to teach, which is side hustling, um, because I think that the market will not recover for another one more year. So that's the reason why we did that. Uh, so I would say it's been very, very successful uh, and I'm very happy with the outcome. Cool. And okay, when you say 30,000 registrations, that means it's the free registrations, um, 30,000, and then 3,000 uh, tickets sold is like the paid registration, is it? Yeah, sorry, correct. So, 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 so first we built the awareness, right? So then 30,000 people registered and said they wanted to know more. Okay. Uh, and then after that, from there, about three to 4,000 people uh, get the ticket to attend the convention, which is the, 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 the cost is just a deposit, actually. Mm. So then they come in and learn. Uh, learn for, uh, the, 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 the cost of the ticket was around uh, 15 US dollars deposit. Okay. Um, so as long as they come and attend and after two weeks, they'll get their money back. Okay. So, uh, and then from there, uh, at the back end there, uh, at the last day, uh, or second last day, uh, we did have a, a package that we promote, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of people wanted to learn even more after that. Mm -hmm. So, which we did, you know, but the, even that package was, a. Um, due to their demand that we came out with it as well. Uh, I think it was like a thousand US dollars, you know, a thousand plus US dollars only okay. for like 15 workshops. What would they have, would have paid for one workshop 
now they get 15 workshops. Mm-hmm. So, so it was a massive uh, value deliver there. Mm. So yep. like your cost to acquire each customer is like about 1,000 um, US dollars. Like uh, thousand dollars in ad spend and yeah. you got 3,000 tickets, right? So the cost to acquire one customer is about one eh? It's about one hundred dollars, uh, About about. About there, about there. Yeah, about there. You're right. Okay. It's about hundred dollars. So, hmm. how many, like roughly, how many of like the one thousand USD packages do you sell? Uh, we have hit about two hundred over. Um, two two something, two hundred or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so you broke even on the front end, and then on the back end, that's where you. That's where yeah. you make your profits, sir. Uh. Right. Yep, correct. Cool. Okay, so so the like, thing the thing that I wanted to point out to people who are listening is that if you know your numbers well, then you can scale. Mm. You know, you gotta know your numbers well, you gotta know your numbers, tracking it forward. Um, so this was not the the so this round uh, the convention is second round already. Mm. We did two rounds, one round and then after that, two months later, another one more round. The same convention, we pretty much the same speakers, but slightly improved version of it. Uh, with, with, with improvement of here and there. So it's always about doing the first convention slightly smaller and then you do a bigger convention second round uh, back to back, you know, we, it best is within one month uh, to be honest. So, but anyway, um, so that's what we did. So, so, so the key point to learn is that if you know your numbers well, you're not afraid to spend. That's, mm-hmm. the, that's the main point there. And, and number two, what we learn also is that, I mean, for me, I always like to disrupt the market um, as in, I like to move the free line. Mm. It means, you know, it giving like so much of tremendous value that, you know, even if people do not end up uh, uh, signing up for anything, they will walk away way much more value mm. um, than, than anything else, you know. And, and of course, people know this concept, but not many people push that concept even deeper. Mm. So we are pushing the concept already one level deeper already. Mm. Uh, uh, you know that means like what people are making money in the market right now is the things that we are giving out for free that's what I'm trying to say uh, and, and, and I think if you know your numbers well I think that will work out well and number two you, uh, you also will build a very, really really strong community and people that will trust you and will grow together with you you know so that, that's what we have achieved so what makes you like motivated to, to do this so what happened was because of the first lockdown, first, uh, uh, you know, like the pandemic thing happened in our Asia region, which is around uh, first quarter of last year, right? Where, where hell break loose. And I remember that I was, I flew out of country to celebrate my anniversary with my wife two days before my country lockdown, which is Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I didn't feel the impact yet until halfway through the trip, I realized that, I think shit is happening, you know, and shit is getting real, like, like real. And I, I usually, I feel that my intuition can tell me about 12 months ahead what's going to happen. So I trust in my intuition that things is going to go really bad. Things will go very wrong. And a lot of people will be panicked and don't know what to do in the first six to nine months of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of uncertainty. So I was thinking to myself, like, what can I do to help out? Okay, and I thought about doing a submit that time for teaching people about digital marketing because number one, I feel that it happens to be my area of expertise. But at the same time, I feel that if people, whether you are individual or business owner, if you can learn a bit about digital marketing, mm. I'm hoping that it can help you to explore something during the lockdown to kind of use digital marketing for some for yourself or for your business. That was my thought, train of thoughts. Mm-hmm. So I remember like a few days before I fly back from Turkey that time, I already mobilized my team to, to get going already. So when I land back on uh, into Malaysia, I already launched the summit. Uh, from an idea to launching in 48 hours, I said, we need to do something like this and we shall figure out how to do it. And we just, we just came up with it and just launched it. And I remember that time, um, similar concept, we, we pull people together and do a Facebook Live I remember we had about 12,000 people watching it live mm-hmm. at the same time on Facebook. Um, and that time also there was a small fee just to get people to, to, to learn, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I can tell you, truth to be told, 
that was never thought about back end and multi, uh, monetization one. Mm. It was purely, I wanted to get a few good speakers to come in and I tell them that, hey, can you help me out and you know just provide value and must be something that people can take action on as soon as possible. That was the objective. So we, I pulled in about 16 speakers that were willing to help out. So we just did, you know, we just did that and push it out there. That time we didn't have to spend so much. We spent like maybe 20,000, 30,000 on ads, USD mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in one week. So we had seven to 10 days to promote and we push it up. And, uh, um, and it was very motivating to find that even just a simple summit like this, we have many students that started without knowing anything. For example, one personal trainer, she was, she was breaking down uh and but what happened was on the on the last day of the summit after that past midnight i think 2 a.m she dropped a video uh testimonial to say that you know she came to this summit without knowing anything at all she's a personal trainer gym instructor cannot do any training no money no income and then uh from the summit itself i think 2 a.m in the morning she already started to get inquiry for her training virtually mm. you know that means two to three hours after the summit ended mm. she saw something really she got something tangible already you know and and that was i tell you i mean she cried okay and and i to me that was the objective we set out to achieve and we find that that was so good um so then we decided to do more and more of that you know, and you know to, to create more awareness and build more of these summits to just go out there and share with people so that was really the true motivation mm. of uh, of why we did this um yeah i would say like right now in singapore malaysia you're the king of summits uh. like i mean <laughs> you, you've done i think probably like eight summits or ten summits in the last yeah, around one there. year right <laughs> yes so, um like how do you handle the tech the logistics i mean like just inviting everyone to <laughs> sign up already go to a facebook group but also not easy you know you know Yep. Like, yep. Um, yeah, so, yeah. You, you, are, you are totally you are totally right about that. <laughs> we were not prepared in the first summit mm. um, because enrolling 4,000 people into a Facebook group to make sure they don't miss out on the summit, you know, mm. you cannot just email them and hope that they will join. Yeah, It doesn't work that way. And we found out very quickly that this is a problem and we had two days to enroll 4,000 people in. So once we knew there was an issue, we straight away hire about 10 to 15 part-timers, get on the phone and call each and every one of them, 4,000 to 5,000 calls. And some of these calls takes more than 10 to 15 minutes because there are, they are also people who are elderly who have no idea how to go on onto the Facebook group. So we have to guide them step by step as well. But I'm, I'm happy to say that we quickly took action, um, rectify it. I think we managed to enroll like 90 over percent before the summit start. So, so um, I think it's about, you, you got to know that that is an issue, then you just have to jump on it and fix it very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of, I know that a lot of summit, after us, they, they came out with summits and all that, they face this kind of customer logistic nightmare, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. And um, I mean, I don't know how, I mean, I, I don't know what's their train of thoughts in terms of that, but um, no doubt there is an issue, but it's about how you fix it and move forward. Because you got to know if the if the people, even if they pay small amount, but if they cannot go into the group, they don't get value, then they feel that something is wrong somewhere, you know? So our, we know very clearly that even though they pay low price, we still want them to go into the group and make sure they, they get something. That is very, very important for us. So we deploy a lot of communication channel, Telegram, SMS, phone call, emails. In fact, we... Of course, some people find that it's very aggressive and of course, it irritated some people as well. But we got no choice. We have to make sure that everybody enrolled in. So we have four, four communication channels all the time, including chatbot, sorry, five, mm. that we will communicate with our customers all the time. Um, so, so after the first one, we learned very quickly and then we knew how to solve all this problem. So yeah, I, I mean, like it's just a matter of knowing like what's the issue and quickly jump on it and don't wait and pray for something to happen. Uh, that is the biggest challenge that I think a lot of people will face. Cool. Okay, one thing I want to ask you is like, you've taken a lot of businesses to seven figures and eight figures, right? And okay, when was the first business that, like at, at what age, right, do you take your first business to eight figures? And then, yeah, how do you scale from there? I think my first seven figure is like 
around early 20s when I do a lot of product launches. I, I, I learned about product launch uh, around the time where people like Jeff Walker might feel same. I mean, those are the, the era that I'm in. OG, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so those are the time where we try to outbeat each other in product launch. So I did like uh, 200K in seven days, 300K in seven days, 400K in seven days, that kind of things. Um, so that's my first like kind of take into it. Um, but, you know, obviously when you're not mature in business, right, um, you can't see far. That's the problem with a lot of people that will face because this is common human weakness, which is we, we like instant gratification. We like instant reward. You know, we feel happy. Endorphin comes in, you know, hit our brain. We feel happy. We see $10 come continuously coming in, we're happy, but we don't know that the $10 is just $10, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, so I made my fair share of mistake in my first uh, maybe 5-10 years of my business life. Um, trying a lot of things, do a lot of things and then make a lot of mistakes. Um, I would say only the last maybe five years, you know, after hitting over 35 that I became more mature and I understand how to optimize a uh, dollar per minute, you know, that means every, every time I spend about, you know, how, how, how does that translate to how much of return? You know, it's not about you are crazy about money and don't get me wrong, but it's just, I'm just giving a very simple yeah. example analogy, you know, like I use, I, is your time spent getting you the maximum ROI? Correct. Even it means that spending time with family is a high ROI to me. So that means, mm. can I spend more time with my family or can I spend more time in business that can get even more money, right? right. You know, I, I heard of this saying, which is, I feel that's so important, which I think it's also very interesting. I think you'll find this interesting saying also. Money is not determined by the value that's printed on a piece of note. Mm -hmm. The value of money is determined by who's the owner of that piece of note. Mm. Okay. Now, if you take that dollar and that, that hundred dollars uh, give to someone on the street, okay, who have lack of knowledge or strategy or whatever, maybe this person will spend it off and you'll be gone in a few days, right? If you take that hundred dollar, give it to someone who has a lot of knowledge, you know, a lot of strategy, or even you give it to someone like Warren Buffett, that hundred dollars is no longer hundred dollars. It could turn into a million dollars in the next seven days. You, you get what I say? Yeah. Um, so it is very important that when the money falls into our hand or resources fall into our hand, are we able to triple, quadruple that resources? So I think that's important. So I would say I only have that capability over the last five to six years. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, right, now I get to a point where any business that I touch or even involve in, I can see this business going into the 10, 20 million range, mm. you know, but that comes with, to be honest, it comes with a lot of experience, you know, hitting a lot of wall, you know, but I can see that happening. Oh, and, and then when I see something and I see someone that has a capability, I'll say that, oh, something like what you do, we can do about 1 million in the first year, 2 million in the second year, 4 million in the third year. I can straight away say that, although some people may say like, huh? You straight away see, you straight away know, but this is experience, uh, you know? So, so that's why like over the last three years, um, I think four businesses went into eight figures. Um, I mean, I try, to, I try to help, I try to help one to two company a year to hit eight figure. Mm -hmm. So I will say that uh, it's quite a stable framework. That means I have a train of thoughts when it comes to like, if I want to take businesses to eight figure, Pop, 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 pop. this is the things that has to be done and boom, you will hit that. You know, it's not going to be far off, but this comes with experience. No? Can I see, can I see some business going to nine figure? Okay. That is maybe a little bit uncharted for now. You know, I'm trying to get there. Maybe three years from now when you interview me, I'll say that, oh, I can already see nine figure. Maybe five years you interview me from now, I can say one billion for any business I touch. That is not an issue. So, but for now, I think between 10 to 8, 50 million, 60 million, for any business that I say can do, it will generally hit there, you know? Mm. So, so yeah. Lor. And uh, are you talking about US dollars or Malaysian ringgit? But it doesn't matter, right, Alaric, if yeah. you think about it, because it, that what you just said is just a currency. Correct. Okay. If, if, if 10 million sing and 10 million USD, mm. the difficulty level is the same. It's just a matter of if you are in Singapore, then that is the currency you make. But if you take the same thing, in 10 million USD, it's, it actually should be compared as, it should be the same. Yeah. You get I me? Mean? It's just matter you executed it in this currency or that currency. I, I don't think currency 
matters that much. Uh, except for certain countries where the currency is crazy one, okay? Crazy like Indonesia. Yeah, yeah, correct, 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 correct. But if you ask me, oh, is 10 million Sing dollar easier than 10 million USD? No, I don't think so. You know, it is roughly the same. Even yeah. though you, you, uh, Sing dollar is 25% lower than, than USD, but it does not mean 25% easier for Singaporean to make 10 million US dollar. It's right. probably equally as difficult or maybe a little bit more difficult. I don't know, but I think that's how we should compare. Right? Okay. Now let's talk about that. So I, I researched a lot of companies, right? I realized that almost ev like every big company, okay? Or every even public listed company, they all take on debt. They all take on, they all raise funds, right? Uh, do you think that that's necessary as an entrepreneur? No. no. Um, okay. We need to understand, uh, I mean, there is this thing about, this hype about startup fundraising, that valuation and all this. Now that, 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 that bubble, that crazy thing that happened a few years ago, okay, that part I think is not right, okay? But um, if you ask me, if you know how to deploy that, of course, by all means, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but do I think that all companies need to start from raising debt to go? No. But if people who are smart know how to use that, yes, mm -hmm. that, is, that should be done and should be maximized. I mean, like Apple is deploying debt. A lot of companies are deploying debt, but it's because they are smart, not because that they need the money to survive. There is a difference there. You get what I mean? So, so like, for example, if, if the, if like Apple actually deployed debt is because they don't want to bring the money back to US because of taxation, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I st they still need money to run in US, right? So they raise debt in the uh, US at a lower price. They keep their money in overseas so that they don't have to get tax. That is smart. You know, I raise that, maybe it cost me one, two percent. But if I bring back money to US, I may need, may need to pay 10, 20 percent tax. So, so you see, that's being smart. I keep my money overseas first until certain point. There is a certain way I can spend the money without bringing it back. Or maybe the US government say, okay, I give you discount. You bring back your money back to US. You know, so what I'm trying to say in a very simple term is that you should not have the mentality that I want to start a company. I need to raise that. I want to hit high valuation, raise money, millions and millions and millions. No, mm. it does not have to be that way. Mm. But if you believe that the money uh, makes sense, that means it's strategic. You can get more than just money. You can get help uh, together with the money. Plus the money is the cost of the money is not, it is already calculated properly. You know what you're getting into. Then I say yes, because some people don't realize that raising money with equity is more expensive than raising money with interest, you know, or using your credit card could be cheaper, you know, but there are also scenarios that even though I can get cheaper in, uh, in outside, I'm willing to pay the money to uh, get, let someone to, 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 to invest in me because actually I want that person either for his credibility, for his brain power or for, for whatsoever, which worth more than the interest that I will save. Maybe credit card 18%, this guy, uh, you know, I have to lose 20% uh, equity, but I bring this guy in, maybe he can double my business, mm -hmm. you know? So just like, just like I have a speaker, I mean, like, like in a speaking scenario, right? Mm -hmm. People want to do webinar and all that. So I, I know that there are many people out there that's doing maybe like, if they are good, they do about 1 million a year, you know? Mm -hmm. And anyone that's doing 1 million a year, I say, give me 12 months, you will do 4 million. If you, but I know generally if they do it by themselves, they maybe will hit about, if they are okay, Two million okay but sometimes they hit comfort zone they just stay at one two million one two million one two million so then my question is that if i can if you if you if you let me get in and i can help you and push you to do four million which is four x if you do it by yourself it's two x which means to say that even at 50 percent equity you still don't lose money generally speaking just a general term um, but of course a lot of people don't see that far okay so, so you, as an entrepreneur, when you build business, you have to ask yourself the money that you bring on board, the debt that you bring on board, do you really know what you're doing with it? Mm -hmm. If not, sometimes it's better to use some credit card, fund your business, get to the certain point first, prove yourself first. That is generally the scenario. Most of the time, it should be like that uh, for the first few months to prove the concept first. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't prove the concept using other people's money. Mm -hmm. You could, but it just means that you are, you are not, you don't have enough skin in the game. You know, you, you are just, you don't have the balls to do it. You are just trying to use other people's money to do it. And you know what is going to happen with that? The, 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 the mindset will set in that, you know, it feels, never mind, it's not my money. Worst case, people don't like me only. 
So that's the problem. But if you use your own money, you've got no other way to go around. You owe credit card debt, you're going to do whatever it takes to hit that. So that is, so that's the pros and cons. Um, but yeah, generally, no, unless you know what you're doing and you, the money is for good use and there's a lot of other things that comes with the money, then take the money. Mm. So, okay, for example, like in my scenario, right, um, like when I was 23, I was like, kind of like financially free. Like financially free to me is just passive income more than expenses. So I, I, I actually track like since young, I, I, I play rich for that. Since young, I play cash flow for kids and then cash flow yeah. for adults. So my whole goal ever since I was young, right, has been how do I get more passive income than my expenses, right? So I've been tracking my expenses. I've been tracking my passive income. Um, when I was like 22 or 23 as well, my passive income was already more than my expenses, okay? So um, so I, can't, I kind of reached a point where if I don't work, right, actually, I, I, I'm set for life, okay? Yeah. Uh, even when I go to UK or what, my net worth still increases, one. that means... Yeah. Even I go UK, I, I hardly work. I really that time I really hardly work much. Uh. my net worth yeah. increase. Okay, so um, to me it's like I want to put my money in somewhere that like that. Okay, but at the same time, I, I as an entrepreneur, right, I want to really grow. Uh, you know, like uh, I want to IPO a company one day. I want to. I, I don't mind taking on debt to grow a company just for the sake of you know the achievement of of that. So how would you recommend? Like, do I put? my money in some insurance or something and then like that's not affected by any debt that I owe or how, how will you uh, is, is there any advice for that? Well, my train of thoughts is simple. I think like you got to understand that every every phases of your life, right? Different age, right? Mm. Um, as your when you're young, you can you can have the strength and power to and the risk uh, appetite to build active income. <clears throat> that means building business and all that. Right. Um, and and you see you Usually, how it seems is that you have to see a, a graph, you know, between passive and active, right, versus your age. That is how I look at it, okay? I, I believe that anyone, generally speaking, should probably be very active building their active income. That means building their business as well uh, until probably until they hit, I think uh, even until age of 50. I think this is uh, from where they start until age of 50. I think it's where they, they build something amazing, build their active income and all that. You know, but does it mean that you stop building your passive income? No, but is the passive income the main focus? I don't personally don't think so as well. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Because you see, uh, playing active and passive income, right, has has a effect on your mindset one, you know, mm. have an effect on your your how you think towards money as well. Because passive income means you're playing defensive. Mm. Okay, in a way you're playing defensive. That means because you're trying to build safety net. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you try to build safety net and you're trying to play passive, uh, uh, try try to play defensive, right? It will affect your your mindset and mentality to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Versus the other way around, right? Let's just say you don't really have a safety net, you know, but you know you're hardworking. You 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 try, you know, you aggressive, you take risks and all that kind of stuff, right? Your life is up and down in the first few years or 10, 15 years, 20 years after you graduate from university. Now, how does that shape you and make you think differently? Number one, it will, it will help you to understand that, look, life is never perfect. Things can go wrong and go wrong in the worst possible time. You know, when you take risks, there's high reward. When, you, when, you, when there's low risk, low reward kind of thing. So all these different things that you learn in the first 10, 20 years of going on an adventure to, to, to build some, some companies or building some business, solving some problems, right? You will learn all these things. Mm. Okay? Uh, which I think compared to, to, to trying to build passive income, has a different sets of learning. There's no right or wrong, okay? Don't get me wrong. There's no right or wrong at all, okay? I mean, uh, uh, there are also many, obviously many people's dream is obviously just like you, right? They want to build passive income. Who does not like to have a safety net? Every human born from day one wants to have a safety net. Mm -hmm. Case closed. That is what it is, okay? Mm -hmm. So the question then is that what you want to achieve in life? If, 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 having that passive income and you you have other things you want to do with your time um you know and all that kind of stuff and if you think that is meaningful to you that's your meaning of life you get I me mean? there's nothing wrong with that um but on the other end i mean like if someone like me for example i i can't i i can't sit still okay i i like to do a lot of stuff and like i like to build stuff and because i don't even have time now i start to work with entrepreneurs who is driven and I let them borrow my brain and then like go and build some crazy stuff, you know? Mm. So, so that is my, my definition of my vision that I have in mind. 
Mm-hmm. So, so what I'm trying to say in a very simple term is that if you ask me generally speaking, right, generally speaking, mm-hmm. I will say that anyone who's listening, if you're in your early stage of life, that means anywhere between, you know, teenage until up to 40 lah, minimum. Okay. But I feel that you can do it up to 50. Mm-hmm. Up to your first 20 to 25 years, right, is a, it's your best time of your life to go crazy. All right. I mean, every data point that you get from your first 25 years of your life, it's very, very useful and very, very powerful. You fall down, you fall down big time, it's going to be very helpful for you. In fact, you should, I, I pray and hope that some of you are listening will have a big fall in your very early stage of life, you know, and I hope that you have the mindset to ready to fall so that you can crawl out of it. So it's important to train your mindset at the early stage, have the good mindset, and then go, go on an adventure make mistake, fall down as much as possible, all right? So that, you know, when you get to a study something and onwards, you have the maturity to, to go for your big one, you know? Mm-hmm. And before you hit 50, you achieve, you know, the, the, the crazy dream, all right? I mean, like, you know, no, no need to say Elon Musk, but what I'm trying, trying to say is along that, that direction, you know? Um, love it or hate it, right? Um, a lot of people really build something meaningfully big uh, at around 35 and above. Um, you know, don't say about the outliers, you know, who is like 20 something and all that. Those kind of news really give people a lot of uh, false um, sense of what's going on. Mm. Okay? Uh, not that people cannot dream big, okay? but I can tell you generally what, what happens is this. Uh, you make a lot of mistakes, you learn something along the way, at around 30 something, you have some maturity, you have some savings, you have some resources, you have some network, you have some people around you. Then you whack and uh, 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 the, the, your next phase of life. Then I think between 35 to 45, it's where you achieve something meaningfully large, uh, be it impact or be it dollar and cent. Mm. Um, because sometimes build network takes time. Mm. Build maturity takes time. You fall down, come out again, takes time. You know, I have a student came to my class, 18 years old, 20 years old, uh, at age of 20, some 20 or 21, uh, two or three years later after my class, managed to buy a Lamborghini. Mm. Age of 18, cannot even afford to come to my class. And after come to my class already, he left three ringgit 30 cent <laughs> in his bank account. From three ringgit 30 cent, he built up to where he is today, you know, to be able to afford Lamborghini 12 to 18 months after the three ringgit 30 cent, you know. And you know what? Along the way, he lost one million in that 12 months. That means he built out a portfolio, he makes some money, then he lost 1 million and then crawled back up again six months later. And I'm happy for him. He made that mistake that time, you know, when he's young. I mean, actually he's young now, okay? Mm-hmm. So, so imagine if he made that $1 million mistake today, that just means that he can avoid the $1 million range kind of mistake in the future. But he has not made the $10 million, $100 million mistakes yet. So we will see what happens, you know. Um, so so just don't be afraid of making mistakes, lah. I would say. I mean, at the same time, I'm I'm quite a risk averse person. That means um, I I think calculated risk means I, I I see a risk and I see like okay, you know, it is calculated, lah. And but how how do you calculate, Larry? No matter like, what, based no on matter the what, and what, lah. Yeah. But, but, but the, the, so so okay. Here's the thing, also. Uh, I get it that we are not stupid to do to, to jump off the building and die, right? But yeah. um, at the same time, we also need to have we, we need to we need to admit mm. there is no way in hell we will ever have a perfect calculated risk. One. Correct, correct. You know, the, the risk will be a risk no yeah, matter yeah. what. Nobody predicted pandemic, you know. Mm. So 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 I think to a certain extent, we can do a little bit of preparation. Of course, we are not going to jump into something blindly. But you must, I think all of us need to understand, right? Even, even whoever listening to this have to understand. If you can get close to 40% calculated, I think it's already good enough. I can tell you majority, a part of your decision will still be unpredictable. 60% is unpredictable. Now, why I want to say that is because I don't want people to paralyze. You know, they, they kept like, oh shit, I still got 20%. I don't know whether can do or not. No, if you can, if, if you can get 40% comfort, nah, you're happy already. I can tell you, it will be still be 60% unpredictable and there will be unexpected result as well okay mm-hmm. it's very simple the amount of risk is in tandem with the reward because mm-hmm. if it can be so calculated and can be so predictable to that point right 
everyone else would have done it as well. Simple as that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if nobody has done it before, it just means that you cannot even really calculate very accurately as well, whether this will work or not. Mm -hmm. And But then it also means that the reward will be way much higher because nobody get in or very little people get in. It just means less competition, less right, people right, doing it. Right. But of course, I, I also believe that at the same time, there are asymmetric risk rewards. Uh, there are some things that is high risk, but low rewards or some things that are high reward. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> of right. course, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, but I was asking, right? So in terms of like, let's say my assets or what, right? So like, how do I... Uh, is there any like financial mechanisms where um, I can guarantee that, okay, I'll, I'll get this income every month while, while making sure that like it's not being able to be touched by debtors or, you know? Bank. I mean, let, let, me, let me just put it this way also, right? Ellery. Uh, I don't know if you know, but I think you will know this piece of information that, you know, Elon Musk probably stayed in his rented home until just right, last right. few years ago, right? Um, so, you see, the problem is we are born and raised, go through a certain very specific uh, standard operating procedure. Uh. <laughs> we are born, we go to school and try to get a job and then buy a car, buy a house, get into a 40 years debt, you know, uh, buy insurance and all these kind of things, right? Um, I mean, the problem with that is that it will tie you up with like a lot of commitments. It will tie you up with a lot of inflexibility and it will put you in a stage of fear, right? If, especially people who start to buy a house at an early stage, you know, and then there's a commitment there. Every month you have to pay 500,000 or 2,000 or whatever. And that's it, you know, you don't even dare to try to do something else because you might lose the house. Yeah. That, that to me, I mean, like at, at the early stage, I already learned that and I, and I knew that I would not get a house, you know, even until today, I'm very happy to stay in a rented place, you know, because I have the flexibility to choose to downsize, upsize, mm. change whatever I want, anytime right. I want, yes, you know. Yes. Um, so, I mean, being smart about the money is a question of whether your, where your priorities is, mm. okay. Um, if you if you want to put into a different basket of it, of course, there's a lot of options out there. You know, it could be as simple as, um, you know, a fund management that, that you put in some money and then people manage for you. You get like, you know, anywhere from 5%, 7% or even up to 10%. Now there's even the AI that help you to trade as well, which right, is but those free. Are not, but those are not um, protected by debt. For, for example, let's say CPF, right? It's protected by debtors. So like... <laughs> You know, CPF, like, example, like in Singapore, got CPF, right? But um, if I put in a fund or what, if let's say I owe a hundred million dollars, I still have to take for my personal, you know? Yeah, so. I mean, so, 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 so what, what, um, you, like for me, what I do is that usually uh, up to a certain level, right? What you do is usually you will, your job is to find fund managers. Mm. That, that is the, the, the job of, you know, uh, how to manage your money is, if the fund manager don't do a good job, next year you fire and choose another fund manager. That's it. You know, so so that that will it will come to a point where you your job is to just find the the a good fund manager, you know, to manage your fund. Uh, but if you do not hit a certain level where you can be at that decision of choosing fund managers to manage your money, then you personally have to probably go down the road of you know picking five uh, class of assets to choose. You know, maybe one uh, 25, 20% go to AI to help you to manage, 20% go to the approved, you know, proper fund managers that like mutual funds that, you know, you're you are, you are putting a bit of money and then they, you know, they invest for everyone. Uh, it could be that. And 20% maybe go into uh, uh, a real estate uh, related uh, investment. So you can just put across five or six um, a class of, you know, uh, the, 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 I mean, let's put it this way. Uh, even if it's a country, a uh, country can go down also. Uh, yeah. The country can go bankrupt, seriously. Yeah. So, so would, would I think about like everything is guaranteed 100%? Never ever have that thought. You know, never ever have that thought. A country can go down. An uh, entire planet also can, can be killed by a meteor. You know, seriously. Um, I, <laughs> if I think about trying to guarantee 100%, Ironclad, right? I mean, I, I'll go crazy a little bit. Like. That will be really a bit of a sense of security issues if you ask me, you know? So, um, in the last five years of your business, right, have you taken on any debt or everything has been like self-funded? I guess I'm lucky that I never really ever have to raise money. 
Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's always been self-funded. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never took any money from the outside, mm-hmm. but would, but you know that also I question myself. Like, does that mean that I'm just not thinking big enough? Mm. I would question myself that too, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I'm thinking differently. You know, yeah. I'm thinking like this. Right. So when when rich people like like super rich people like you know how they get there, why are they using that and all that? There must be a certain reason behind it. Mm. And it may not necessarily be just a bad reason. Sometimes when we think of the other way, it could be just because we didn't have enough knowledge or we read the wrong thing and everybody say, oh, bad, that is bad, that is bad, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't know, you know? So, so, so if you ask me, I don't think it's necessarily a good thing that I don't, I don't build a company using that. There could be something I'm missing out somewhere, mm. you know? And you brought it at a time that actually I'm thinking about that over the last maybe one, two years, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of that. So I'm trying to do a bit more research on, you know, depth. And that's why I could say, talk a little bit more on that. Uh, it's because I've been reading up, especially on this topic over the last yeah. 24 months. Uh, but uh, I suspect you need, it's about whether, what do you want to build? Mm. There are people that build up to maybe seven, 800 million or 1 billion kind of company with almost know that also got, you know, but we have to also study how many years it took. Who, which companies you're talking about? There, there are actually, there are. I think, I, I suspect even like in our circle, I think Russell Brunson built ClickFunnel, I think probably did not even. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. You know? But we have to ask ourselves how many, how many years it took. Three years, uh, five years. It, it is minimum five years, but also that is because from a solid background to be careful yeah, also. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you cannot say it's five years, you know. It's probably you all the affiliates all that already. Ten years of internet marketing plus five years in click funnel. So total is like 15 years. Uh, so if someone starts from scratch, can we build five years, can build a two billion dollar company, you know, <laughs> click funnel, but purely using money to run. It is possible as well. Possibly. So the question we have to ask ourselves: do we want to lose 50% of the of the business uh, share? but we get to grow three times faster. This is also a question mark as well, because you know, time is a risk one. You want to take slow and steady. Now, so you cannot say, take it slow and steady, bro. No need to, no need to go so fast one. But the problem is time will wipe us out as well. You know how, 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 cruel, how cruel time is, you know, to, heal, <laughs> to what we do, you know? So I, I feel that we need to take time into consideration uh, when it comes to this debt and, you know, size of the business and how fast you want to grow. I think that's really important. That's why I have no qualms in spending like a million in, in ad spend in mm. five weeks. Because I know if I spend this effectively in five weeks, I'll get the result that people might have taken one, two years to consider because they might think that, oh my God, I have to spend so much. I mean, I'm just throwing an example out, lah, you know? So i rather do it now, get the result now. I know this is certainty. 12 months down the road, anything can happen. And if you ask me again, uh, to be honest with you, right, I regret not spending that 1 million uh, one year ago. <laughs> I would have gotten another four or five times more result. Mm. You know? Yeah. But everyone... Yeah, the ad spend all that cheaper uh, <laughs> one year ago. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, okay. Yeah, and that's why I feel that like the composition at the top is always different from... You know, like, like when we... Like, yeah, the composition at the top is always very different. Uh, at the top, uh, we, like... And, and I feel that there's different paradigms. Like sometimes we go through the paradigm of, oh, debt is not good. Then we go through the paradigm of, eh, we have not run it. We have not taken any debt. Then after we go through the paradigm of, eh, we have not taken debt, but is that a good thing? Maybe we'll go, yeah. So I feel that that's, that's the different stages of my entrepreneur. And that's why I like to do interviews like that. Because um, I learn a lot and like, you know, the, the amount of like bouncing of ideas. And I think that helps you to refresh like, eh, okay, yeah, I, I, I was, you know, I need to go deeper into that. Yeah, great. So if anyone wants to find you, what's the social media handles that they can find you on or your website? I think they, they search for Vinstan, they should be able to find me in Facebook and LinkedIn. These are my two most active uh, social media. Uh, LinkedIn is the best because there's unlimited connection so far. So, you know, if anyone at me, I will approve them and then they can send me a message. So the best is to just search for my name, Vinstan, on LinkedIn. They can definitely find me there. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much for being on the show. I enjoyed this a lot and I look forward to collaborating very, very closely with you as well. Yes, thank you very much, Elric. And I'm just going to drop one quote before you end today. It's uh, my most favorite quote. Do not downgrade your dreams to match your reality. Upgrade your faith to match 
your destiny. All right. So that's what I want to leave everybody with. Thank you so much. Do not downgrade your dreams to match, match your reality. reality. Upgrade your faith to match your destiny. Wow. Your faith to match your destiny. Because oh, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people born with a lot of dreams. One, You are born with dreams, positive, happy, but 20, 30 years down the road, you're not happy, you forget your dreams or you give up in your dreams because maybe you say that I'm not born rich, my government is crazy, my government is lousy, my family not supportive. So everybody start to downgrade their dreams because of their reality. Mm. But the point is, don't ever downgrade your dream. You deserve to succeed in life. Upgrade your belief system, believe in yourself more to achieve what you meant to achieve in life. That is the meaning of the quote. Awesome. That's an amazing quote. And uh, yes, I definitely dream, dream bigger. My dream is really to IPO a company, like to take a company to IPO. Uh. My dream yeah. was to turn a company from zero to $1 million, which I've already done so. So now it's my next, my next, I have two dreams. One is to turn a company from zero to $1 million. One is to take a company from $1 million to IPO. So now it's my second stage of my entrepreneurship journey. Uh. Let's do it together, bro. <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much, Eric.